That's right, America is sending thousands of troops back to the Middle East, which is a big deal. And not just because you have to pay that easy pass again, no. <laughs> it's also because this could lead to war. So when America says Iran is responsible, they better have some solid proof. The U.S. military released this surveillance footage, which American officials tell NBC News shows Iranian sailors removing an unexploded mine from the side of one of the tankers after it was attacked. Fragments of mines and the magnets used to attach them, made by Iran, says the U.S., to attack oil tankers last week. More proof, say U.S. officials, of Iranian guilt. Iranian fingerprints apparently all over an attack that Iran denies carrying out. Iranian fingerprints? <laughs> Honestly, I, uh... I, I don't really know what that last part means. How, <laughs> how can you tell that fingerprints are Iranian? Was the detective like, I knew it. Hummus. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, hummus isn't I Iranian. I know, but if I said Subzi, you wouldn't have gotten the joke. So the U.S. claims that they have enough evidence to prove this attack was car carried out by Iran, right? But because America has a history of crying wolf in the Middle East, some of the U.S.'s allies have said that they need a little bit more than hummus fingers to be convinced. U.S. allies remain split about the allegations against Iran, Japan expressing skepticism while Germany's foreign minister stating the video provided by the U.S. is not sufficient proof. That's right, Japan, whose ship was attacked, by the way, isn't sure that it was Iran and Germany doesn't want to rush into any decisions. And I get it. Both of those countries have a bad history with war, especially Germany. Yeah, they know how they get when there's a war. <laughs> the Germans are like, I think we should all proceed carefully <laughs> and think about... No, Germany, you need to get angry, please, nein. You wouldn't <laughs> like me when I'm angry. <laughs> Last time this happened, I woke up in Argentina with a Spanish wife. <laughs> Now, after some convincing, Germany eventually accepted America's conclusion, blaming Iran. And because of the whole weapons of mass destruction thing, you can't blame America's allies for being a little cautious when taking America's word for it, right? Because America's done this before. Imagine if your friend told you, oh, my God, you gotta get down to this party, Rihanna's here. But then when you got to the party, instead of Rihanna, you just found some middle-aged guy named Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be like, what, that, that's not Rihanna. The guy's just standing in the corner, and he's like, yeah, all I do is work, 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 work. That's all I do. <laughs> if that happened to you, you wouldn't trust your celebrity sighting friends ever again. <laughs> and there is a growing agreement. There is a growing agreement that this looks like it was an attack conducted by Iran. But people are also preaching caution, because maybe it was Iran's government, or maybe it was a rogue element within Iran, or maybe it was someone trying to frame Iran, like a jealous ex. Who knows? <laughs> so despite Mike Pompeo's hawkishness, and John Bolton's walrusness, <laughs> most foreign governments aren't in a hurry to go to war. But there's another person who also doesn't like the idea of war, and you'll never guess who it is. President Trump is now playing down the attacks, telling Time magazine, so far, it's been very minor. We'll see what happens. They are a much different country today than they were two and a half years ago when I came into office. When President Obama signed that horrible deal, they were screaming death to America. I haven't been hearing that lately. President Trump has said he doesn't want to go to war. President, are we going to war with Iran? Oh, I love how the press is just, like, waiting outside of his house as well. Hey, you want to fight with Iran? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it turns out President Trump is not keen on a war with Iran, which I am all for. I mean, maybe he thinks that this is a bad idea, or maybe he's just worried that the military might try and draft him again, you know? <laughs> it's like, Mr. President, we recommend a war against Iran. Oh, my bone spurs are back. They're back. <laughs> they come back every 50 years. <laughs> so the good news is, despite his Twitter fingers, Trump is not a fan of trigger fingers. <laughs> but don't get too comfortable yet, because unfortunately, there are lots of people around him trying to change his mind. And the hawks continue to circle this president, urging him toward action. They're in his ear, making the case for possible intervention. You have Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, National Security Advisor John Bolton, who are a lot more hawkish, who want to be more aggressive in their stance toward the Iranians. Last week, Pompeo uh, went to Congress and delivered a presentation arguing that this administration could use the same authorization of force uh, the Bush White House used in the fight against al-Qaeda 
after 9-11. Wow. Did, did you pick up what they just said there? 18 years later, Mike Pompeo and his friends are trying to use 9-11 as an excuse to go to war with another country that had nothing to do with 9-11. That's what they want. Yeah. And I mean, haven't the troops spent enough time in the Middle East? Just bring them home. They deserve it. Yeah. Just bring them home. <laughs> they deserve to come home. And we deserve to see more of those adorable dog reunion videos. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, like, you know there's gotta be one dog who just doesn't give a shit, right? <laughs> there's probably one dog where the guy's like, I'm home, and he's like, hey, Larry, right? Oh, yeah, I guess you used to live here. All right, well, uh, I'm gonna go look at a bird, but, uh, <laughs> thank you for your service, I guess? <laughs> look, man, here's the thing. I'm not saying America should never fight wars. Right, that's who you are. I get it. <laughs> but do you really think now is the time to start another war? Because it almost feels like... It almost feels like America does war the same way people do Netflix, you know? <laughs> yeah, we start a bunch of things, but we never really commit. You know? People just hang out. Oh, my God, you know what I heard could be great? This new war, Iran. People are like, yeah, oh, but wait, we still need to finish Iraq. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we still need to finish that. Oh, Oh, and aren't we still in the middle of Syria? Whatever happened there? Yeah, I couldn't follow the plot. There were so many bad guys. By the way, who started Niger? Is someone using our account? What is that? <laughs> oh, my God, I just realized we never even finished Afghanistan. <laughs> we started that, like, 20 years ago. So what are we gonna pick? Actually, I'm tired. Let's just go to bad. <laughs> All I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is this. I'm saying I understand America can't not fight a war, but instead of going with a streaming model, Maybe America should switch back to the old-school DVD plan, all right? <laughs> you can start a new war as soon as you finish the ones you already have. <laughs>